Because then uh, I, didn't, I didn't get sent the bulletin that I have electronically, so I'm going to have to go with what I see. Uh, I believe we're going to, we have a prelude and then we open with prayer, is my understanding. So let's prepare ourselves for worship. <coughs> Let's bow for prayer. Oh, gracious God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit in this place. There is the air of excitement as we gather together physically in worship today. Fill us, empower us, strengthen us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you rise as we sing our opening hymn?
going to do a call to worship today. Christ is calling, inviting, urging, and wooing. Come and follow me. Let us set aside our worry and fear, our busyness, and competing agendas to respond to the call of Christ's call. Christ offers us the opportunity to walk with him, to come to know his heart more deeply day by day. Nothing is more precious than opening our hearts to God who fills us with love. Christ grants us the privilege of working alongside of him in our Father's business. There is no higher call and no greater joy than making a difference in the kingdom of God. Come, let us worship the one who calls us to follow. We worship in joy and gratitude and grace. Jesus Christ is the Lord of all. I want to, you may be seated, I'm going to read to you the gospel lesson as found in Mark chapter 1, verses 14 to 20. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little further, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in the boat, mending the nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. Praise be to God and his word. We have some special music from our youth who are coming now to share with us. talking about um above all remember what god did for you and how jesus died on the cross for you and we see this in the one verse where it says you took the fall and thought of me above all and to me that just kind of reminds me of the like what he like what he did for us how we now have eternal life and our sins will forever be forgiven because of you know what he died on the cross for us and i think that's one of the most truest forms of love and i saw this thing on i think it was instagram i don't know but it says, you know, when you truly think about God and who he is, you cannot help but be amazed that he chose to love you and that he still does. And I think that's just one of the greatest things I've ever heard to put into perspective. In this song, we actually started singing it a little bit, I think before the new year, but it really kind of spoke to me. January has been so hard. <laughs> right now we have finals this week, my birthday's tomorrow, it's just been crazy. But at the very beginning of the year, my grandmother passed away, like the first day of the month, you know, January 1st. And that was around the time that you're singing this song. And it kind of just like spoke to me because, you know, when it's talking about his love, you remember what he did for you and how great like people are. And that, you know, earth is in our forever home, but heaven is, sorry, don't get emotional. But um, I remember, so we were able to see her and I was allowed to go in with another person because I'm underage, so I went in with my sister. And I'm gonna try to make this, like, I don't wanna waste all your time here, but, so I went in with my sister and we walked in and I remember I just like broke down and started crying and I said to her, you know, I said, Megan, I can't do this. I can't do this. Like, it was so hard to see someone you love in a state like that. And then when we were done, you know, like visiting with her, 
we saw this, um, this nurse came by and she saw me, she saw me just in a puddle of tears. And she hugged me and she said, do you believe in God? And I said, yes, with every, like with everything in me. And then she said, there's nothing that we can do. Like we try everything we can, but in the end we have to trust him. And I don't, like God put that nurse on that shift for me because I need to hear those words. And then the last time that I saw her, I saw her every day up until, you know, the day before she passed away. And the hospice nurse came in and she just started talking, you know, to my grandma and my, and my sister and I how, you know, she's going to be walking on streets of gold. She's going to be with Jesus. She's going to be with everyone she loves. And to me, that just was like perfect because that's what I need to hear. And it just, you know, reminds me of this verse, like you took the fall and thought of me because he promises us eternity in heaven. And I'm sorry, I didn't want to waste all your time, but I hope that made sense. So now we're going to sing. Thank you. <laughs>
don't think we could say that any better. I think that was the right approach. You guys were good. It's good to see you back. It's good to hear your words. Do we have any joys today? Is God doing something in your life? A joy. Yeah, yeah. It's a joy to see all of you. Do we have any other joys or prayer concerns? Yeah. I have a joy in my arm. Much better. And I'm still using them more prayer. But okay. Um, I have a joy in my arm. Okay. Really good. Good. I think it's a joy that uh, with, uh, with Zoom that we can have our Sunday school and, uh, you know, people that can come out and want to come out that don't have Zoom are there and we can touch the people who can't come out. Yeah. You know, God's working. And, uh, you know, I see his spirit moving all over the place. I just praise him for that. It's amazing that uh, through the virus, things have changed and it's not a terrible change. You know, we can reach people one way or another. Yeah. Yes. Continue prayers for the Snyder family, for the children, the foster mother. They're still struggling with being separated in two different ways, but both sets of the families and the children have been doing constant activities on the weekends that they're all back together with each other. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Kathy Miller. Yes, Kathy. Continue to pray for her. Are there others? Yes, Belinda. For our granddaughter, Charlotte, she's um, still having some problems. And she's, for those of you guys that aren't aware of Belinda, um, in March, she's going to be in the program. Okay, and also she has Crohn-like symptoms, and she's just, she's not even three yet, so we need God to, to do some work there. Okay, we're good. Let's bow for some silent prayer then. God, not only do we ask that you would meet these needs, but we also ask that you would bless our gifts, our service, and our time together. We ask, dear God, that you would minister to all of them. There's so many. There are those that have been spoken. There are those that are unspoken. There are those that are facing uh, death through cancer. There are others that uh, family members have lost friends and family to COVID. These are unsettling and uncertain times, too, God. We lift them before you, that we may come together as a faith community in unity, and we may also come together as a nation with a little more unity. And now, Lord, we pray as we have been taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Would you stand as we sing another hymn?
may be seated. I have to share with you, we're continuing our series, God Speaks, Am I Listening? Hearing God in our lives changes us. And I titled the sermon, Going Just a Little Bit Further. Hearing is that ability, as you know, to perceive sound. Hearing is that ability at times to perceive the message. I have to be honest with you, sometimes my hearing doesn't get the message right. Have any of you experienced that a little bit? It, it doesn't matter what you hear, what you said, it's, it doesn't come in there right. I don't know, I guess I'm getting a little older. The ability to be able to hear God's voice and act upon it and grow from the message is also another part of hearing. How is your ability to hear the voice of God these days? How is your ability to understand? Have you ever had a hard time hearing the message or, or hearing even the voice of God? I have a hard time hearing when there are competing voices. How about you? It always amazed me that young people can sit in front of a television and it is playing, they are doing their homework, and when they are done, they remember all of it. To be honest with you, uh, I would remember none of it. When I spend time listening to God, I have to tune out and get rid of all the other voices. The voices that say, well, did you turn that knob off? You know what I'm saying? Did you do this? Did you? No, they all have to go. In order for me to hear God, I actually have to be in silence. Or there are times when God gets louder. How many of you can remember the last time you heard God speak to you? That God said something? I, I'm not talking audible. Maybe it was audible for you. I have no idea. But I'm talking somehow a message came through to you and you said, oh, that's God. I know he wants me to do this. I know he wants something out of my life. I know he wants something. We're going to look at that. And our first point is we're going to jump right back into the scripture. and says beginnings and endings. We talked about an epiphany over the last few weeks. And that's really when God talks to us and we make that connection between God and ourselves. And we know at that time that that word, that that message, that that thought, that, that reading, that image is for me. We know beyond a shadow of a doubt that somehow God has something to say to me. Have you ever had that experience? In the Gospel of Mark a few weeks ago, we read verses, uh, chapter 1, verses 10 and 11, and we see this epiphany with Jesus and God, and I'm not sure how the rest of the community perceived it. And it says this, starting in verse 10. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens being torn open and the Spirit descending like a dove. And a voice coming from heaven, you are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. The next thing we notice in chapter 1 is that John's ministry ends and Jesus' ministry moves. In verse 14, it is said this way. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. I have to tell you, there's a little interim of a few verses where he was in the wilderness being tempted, and then he came into ministry. And somewhere in the midst of all that, John the Baptist got arrested. Mark's gospel, which is really Peter's notes, kind of goes from one thought to the next. It's got a theme to it, but it goes from one thought to the next. He doesn't spend much time on things that are irrelevant. He doesn't spend much time trying to fill in all the cracks and all the details, but he wants to get across this gospel message to each one of us. He wants us to understand this gospel message that it becomes a part of our lives. Mark 1.15 and saying, 
The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. The time is fulfilled. Christ has broken into the world with the gospel message to touch the world around us with the truth of why Christ came. He, bring, he, brought to pass, to, he brought to pass, he was bringing to pass what he had promised. And in, with Jesus' beginning of the ministry, things were going to change. Things were going to be different. Up until that time, people kind of guessed and groped at what God was saying. Job put it this way in 23.3. Oh, that I knew where I might find him. Marcus Aurelius had this to say about his relationships with his gods. He was a Roman emperor. said that the soul can see but dimly. And the word he used in the Greek was looking through water to get a reflection. But with the coming of Christ, we get to see clear and clear. No longer do we have to grope around. No longer do we have to wonder what God has to say. We can know what he has to say through the words, through the testimony of others, through the Holy Spirit speaking in your heart. We can know those things, and our lives can change. Can you hear the voice of God through Christ? One thing we know about the gospel, it's a good news that brings hope. You know, in our day and age now with the virus and all that we're going through and all that we hear on the news, it's nice when we hear a little bit of hope, isn't it? It's nice when just a little bit of word of hope comes out. Colossians 1.23, Paul puts it this way. If indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from hope of the gospel, you that heard which has been proclaimed in all of creation. The gospel is a message of hope. The gospel is a message of transformation. The gospel is a message of peace. The gospel changes lives when we hear it and when we get it. I have to share this, though, about the gospel. I have to share this about Christ speaking in our lives. You can't do anything until the Spirit of God moves in your life. If you do not know Christ, it's Christ moving in your life to bring you to a point to where you can even be able to hear the good news, to where you can even be able to come to the response of repentance. It comes through Christ and his ministry in the world. The good news brings peace within our heart. That conflict of sin can be over because our sins are forgiven and we can walk in relationship with Christ. It is good news of promise. Paul put it this way in Ephesians 3, 6. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. That's good news. How many Gentiles we have in the place? It'd probably be smaller numbers if we say, how many Jews do we have in the place? Okay, and I'm not, you know, you know what I'm saying? You get it? But the reality is that the gospel came not only to the Jews, but the gospel came to the Gentiles, that you and I may know this Christ and be transformed by this message. It is the good news of immortality, living forever. 2 Timothy 1.10 says, And which now has been manifest through the appearing of the Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. This gospel is a message of salvation. Sometimes your pastor gets weird thoughts at night. And I want to share one with you. A few nights ago, I was laying in bed. And for some reason, I began to think of my, my journey in life and all my sins. And it was like I saw before my eyes all these things laying there. Okay? And all those 
those sins, and it was like, how do we get rid of these sins? How do, we, how do they get taken care of? And when I saw all of them and, and I, I sensed that Christ was near me, I started to get a tear in my eye. This is not what I want my Savior to see. This is not how I want to be remembered. And I found myself saying, Jesus, what can a man do but to ask forgiveness? What can a person do but to confess sin and ask God to forgive our sins? And once I said those things, a wave of peace just swept down over my heart. What can we do to care for our sins? You can't make enough amends to forgive your sins. Did you know that? You can't make enough amends that your sins will be washed away. You can't do enough good works to touch any sin in your life. The only thing we can do is confess them to God, to repent, to turn to Christ, and believe that Jesus forgives our sins and makes a difference. This gospel was prophesied in the book of Jeremiah, and Jeremiah put it this way. For this is a covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. The word of God and the gospel on earth. How does he write the gospel on our hearts? The Holy Spirit. The Bible. As those things continue to connect, hearing God in our lives changes us. Something changes as we hear these messages. Something changes as God speaks to us. Two weeks ago, I was reading on the material, follow me, you know, because it was part of the series we're looking at. And I began to ask God, what does it mean to follow you today? What does it mean for me as a person of faith to say, I'm going to follow you today? What do I have to do to follow you today? And it dawned on me, I need to listen. Right? I need to listen for God. How would you know what to do today otherwise? How would you know what you're supposed to do? As things come up, you can, you can deal with them, but how would you know? I was sitting in my office praying about this and God put a name in my mind and I called this person up and as I was talking to them on the phone uh, it was a phone call at the right time do you know what I'm saying they had just talked to the doctor they had just talked to their their children and they and this person was distraught this person was struggling and wrestling with what God can and, and will do. Isn't it good that hearing God changes life? Isn't it good that, now that doesn't happen to me every day, okay? It doesn't. You know, I don't get a list of names popping into my head. But isn't it good in that one instance that I was smart enough to say, okay, I prayed for them, I remember them, now I'm going to call them. See how they're doing. Hearing God in our lives changes us, folks. It makes us different. Something changes inside of us when we're open to hear. The second point in the hearing is to be able to repent and believe. Again, I want to reread verse 15. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Repentance is such a wonderful thing. It is to switch allegiance. It is to basically say that I'm not going to follow myself any longer. I'm not going to trust all the leadings that I see from others all around me. I'm going to ask God and I'm going to put God large and in charge. Do you remember the first time you asked Christ into your life? Do you remember how that started to percolate for you? All you wanted to do is follow God. All you wanted to do is serve God because you put him large and in charge. Let's be honest. Once you move down through life, sometimes other things creep up, don't they? That we get involved with them. The next thing we're supposed to do is believe. To believe is to trust and to entrust. 
It's de described as an act of believing or trusting something on the basis of truthfulness and reliability. I believe that Jesus is the Christ. I believe that Jesus is the Messiah, and he is the only way to heaven. I believe that by giving up and surrendering and asking forgiveness and putting him in charge, my life changes. I believe that reading the Bible has an impact on what my life is about. I believe that Jesus is who he says he is, and one day we will spend eternity with him. The third point, God has a plan we listen and follow. Let me read verses 16 and 17. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, and they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men or fishers of people. They heard the voice of God. And again, I come back to that thought. Do you remember when you heard the voice of God for the salvation of your soul? I can't tell you how that happened for you. It happened for you. It happens to all of us. It may not look the same, but it does meet our needs. You know, lives change. Uh, I remember as a young Christian, I was involved in so many things, and I got married and we had children, and now we had more responsibilities. You know what I mean? It wasn't as fancy free as it was when I was uh, single. But even in the state of rearing children, we have to listen for God. Are you hearing God in the way you deal with your spouse, your mate, your lover, and the way you work with your children? Are you asking God to become Lord of their life? Are you tr working toward that point of growing in faith? And your prayer and your desire is that they may grow in faith as well. I guess through the virus, I began to think and write many things down over this, what is it, 300 and some days now? It seems like eternity. And I wrote down the story of my parents' salvation, how it happened, who, where, what. And then I thought about my grandmother, who was a Christian. I never met my grandmother. She died in 1947. But by that time, she knew that her son wasn't walking right with the Lord. Okay, she knew that. And I believe that like all good Christian parents, she began to pray. She began to seek God for that child. And although she did not see it in her lifetime, what a story, what a thought. Jesus' full salvation brought victory. My grandmother came to faith through a Mennonite family. After my grandmother passed away, she, my grandmother had been kind of talking to my mother, but she was really pretty much against that, any religion. And I remember they came up to the first church I ever pastored. We were in the parsonage, and uh, we had like a, a dining area. I mean, we had a dining area, but then there was just like this table, a high-raised table, like a little spot, uh, what I'd call a breakfast nook. And my, uh, I didn't know that my father and mother came up with an intended purpose. I thought it was just to see me. But dad, dad said to mom, now sit down. And he said to me, he said, now you tell her. Tell her what this is all about. And I had the opportunity to share the gospel with her, and she came to faith. Okay? And it was an interesting issue. She came to faith, and 30 days later, my father came to faith. They used to have those little things called tracts. Anybody know what a track is? Okay? They're little books. Well, my father read one of the tracts I would never use. It was too thick, too wordy, and too long. 
he read that and gave his heart to christ and when he shared his testimony he said i was miserable and i saw how happy my wife had become and i couldn't stand myself any longer Jesus changes lives. The Spirit moves upon us. Can you hear his call? James 1, 19 to 22, and, and my wife and I have devotions, and in our devotions we read this. Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God, Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not just hearers only, deceiving yourself. And we got a new, new opening to that. We got a new insight into that when we realized if we read the Bible and God gives us something, we can't just say that's really good and let it alone. Because when we do that, it's like looking in the mirror, we see what God wants and we put it away and we forget about it. When God speaks to us, we have to be people that hear and people that do. It's not just giving good advice. When we say we hear the gospel, we say we believe it by faith. And now because we have faith in what Jesus has given us, we can put it into practice and reality how this word fits in. When we say we believe Christ, there is a response of doing something about what we believe. You understand what I'm saying? You believe, you do. I believe that I can follow Christ. So what that means to me now is when things come up, I gotta write them down and start doing some of them. How about you? When we say that all we do is we hear, we believe, and we're waiting for God to come and take us home, we miss the point until God is done with our lives. God has a purpose and a plan for your life. Do you hear the voice of God? Will you follow? Let's read the end of this gospel passage. And I titled this sermon with these next words words but it's totally out of context the scripture the words are good but it doesn't relate to the scripture and going on a little further before i finish reading i want to question you are you willing to go on a little further with jesus today are you willing to go just a little bit more than you have been going are you willing to do just a little bit more than you have been doing for god i'm not asking you to sign up for a committee I'm not asking you to sign up for anything. I'm asking you, are you willing, if God speaks to you, will you go a little further? And going on a little further, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boats mending the nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired hands and followed him. If we say we hear God, we have to be willing to follow. That's what God has been sharing with me. Sometimes as we grow older, we ask, we have all these responsibilities. How can I follow? I'm here to tell you if we don't follow, maybe our children will never follow. If we don't live this out in front of them, and wrestle with it with them, maybe they won't see it at all. Will you follow? Will you do something with the gospel that you have been given? I can't tell you what to do with it. I can't do that. I'm in a lower management group. That's God's job to tell you. Do you hear his voice? And if you hear his voice, will you follow and act upon what you have heard? I took that follow me thing I told you about, and every day I journal. Usually just bits and trivia stuff. But I journal, and on the top of that, it has follow me. So that I can begin to ask the question, okay, Jesus, today's a new day. How am I going to follow you today? 
Who knows what that'll look like? Who knows what Jesus can do? You say, well, I'm not a speaker. God didn't ask you to be a speaker if you're not a speaker. Somebody could say, well, I'm a wood carver. God can use wood carving. Maybe just a smile on your face at the right time for people around you can be enough. Of course, with masks on, it makes it a little harder. But you get, what, you get the point? Kind words. Oh, man, with all the harsh words that people are spitting back and forth at each other, what a desert for words of encouragement in our world today. What a desert for words of faith and love. We are called to be those people. Will you follow? Will you hear the voice of God? And will you do something with it? Let's bow for a word of prayer. Oh, gracious God, you have called us to be your people. We have placed you large and in charge. And sometimes we get nervous with the things you might ask us to do. But we trust that you have our back. We trust that you walk with us. And where you lead, we will follow. Our goal is not just wrapped up in ourselves, but it's wrapped up in you. Because one day all this earthly stuff is going to go away. One day we're going to be standing in the presence of God, basking in the love of Jesus. And Lord, we want to be able to say in that day, we followed you. I ask for your grace in that way in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand as we sing our closing hymn, I have decided to follow Jesus. That's the ticket, folks. A relationship with Christ changes it all. Let's bow. Oh, Christ, we always invite you to come into our hearts, to forgive us our sins and be our Savior. We place you large and in charge, not following our will anymore, but yours. We thank you for this precious gift and all that you have done. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You may be seated till you're dismissed. Have a great week.